Hey, it's Joe Lines from the Automator, and I'm really excited to announce AutoHotKey version 2 is finally out. The ultimate tool just got even better, or did it. Uh, so, woo, version 2 is finally here. Been in production for like 10 years, or almost 10 years, I think. And so I was really excited to see that if you go here to the website, you can see, you go to download it, and there's version 1.1, version 2. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if, if V2 is actually the official. I don't think it's the official version at the moment. But if you uh, if you click that, it would go to let's go to the other versions, and this is just still pretty awesome. Here you can see the version two is available. Um, let's go ahead and talk about though some of the implications to this and what it means, what what I'm planning to do. You know, what are the changes in V two? We've done a lot of videos on version two, right? Version two, it's much tighter, it's much closer to other languages and how they work. Uh, for programmers, this is going to really help AutoHotKey be taken more seriously, right? And if you're a programmer and you come to use AutoHotKey, V2 is by far definitely, it's going to be really, you're going to be much happier with it and stuff. Objects are much closer to how they're used in other languages, uh, which is great if you're a programmer. Um, for people that are used to old V1, it's going to take a little while to change, but it's it's not that hard. We cover it in our objects and uh, classes course. Uh, using maps, which are, are very different. You just have to get an understanding of it, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, the I, I got to say, one of the biggest things is the GUIs now, because they're objects instead of just commands, man, they're they're much more intuitive, much easier to use. As Ace has demonstrated many times, how V2 with, with creating GUIs and Dimitri Gertz as well has been on here talking about how, wow, so much simpler, right? And I, I get that aspect. Here are some concerns for me, right? And... Here's the first thing, right? You can have both versions. And personally, I don't have any interest in trying to convert the thousands of auto hotkey scripts that I have to V2. I'm going to leave those in V1. And actually, for the foreseeable future in the near term, I'm going to still be coding in V1 myself. Isaiah, when we work on project work, he's coding in V2, which is fine as long as the clients aren't actually looking at the code. If they're looking at the code, then we'll ask which one they prefer, um, unless there's a specific reason for using V2. And, you know, that gets down to there are some libraries that are still only available in V1. There are some that are only available in V2. Um, we, we have actually shown how you can call V2 from V1 and vice versa. So there are ways to use both if you have to. Um, so that's fine. But um, right now, here's one of the big gotchas to me, is as far as editors go, in V1, you have a plethora of different editors. You know, we've covered a lot on site for AutoHotKey, Notepad++. I still use AutoHotKey Studio. Great, solid editor. Actually, I just had a call with Maestriath about possibly converting Studio to, to being able to run and execute V2 code. It it sounds like it's doable, so we might, we might take a stab at that. In V2, what editors do you have? Basically, you have VS Code, um, and that's about it. And here's my my thoughts: is, is VS Code? Don't get me wrong, amazing editor, really incredibly powerful. Its integration with GitHub, phenomenal, right? But the vast, vast majority of people that use AutoHotKey, they're not programmers, nor do they want all this, you know, overhead or a 300, 400 meg file that they have to download and use. Now, Isaiah would say, well, you can browse, you know, use a browser and actually use VS Code from the browser. And it does work really well. However, again, it's just compared to like using Site for Auto Hockey or Studio, those are very lightweight, small programs, very clear, easy to use. And that's my really, one of my biggest concerns is that people that come into this, they don't want to have to learn an editor. Like right? that's why I think that a lot of them even use just plain old notepad, right? And that's going to be a hard thing for auto hotkey for the main people that are using it to switch over until we get a better editor that's a simpler editor uh, i think it's going to be a hard thing for a lot of people to switch over to um, and I, I like i said for me also i i don't want to use vs code personally it's a great editor but i don't want to be a programmer right that's that's not my job and what i do i teach people how to automate stuff but i don't have to automate that's why i hire people like zayas and, and maestriath and, and other people right of to get stuff done um so anyway I'm still really excited that V2 is out. It does have some some big benefits. And this is another contention to me is like in V2, you have to define your variables and assign a value to them before you run the code. And if you don't, it's going to pop up with this, to me, incredibly annoying warning. Thankfully, we don't have to say whether it's an integer or a string, which it's also that is a truly thing that annoys me. But 
it in those days would say, well, it helps help save you on the back end where you you don't make a mistake and this and that. But um, yes, it does. However, you know, when you're just learning, that's a pain. And I think a lot of people that aren't coders are not going to like this. And so it's going to be hard. We need some really good training. But even then, it's just for people that aren't programmers, I think V1 is going to be around for a while for, for them just because it's it's a little simpler and easier and it's more flexible. And, and that's what programmers hate is that there's, you know, a lot of different ways you can write code in V2. It's much more concise and restricted. Uh, so anyway, kudos to Lexicos for finally releasing it. Awesome. I'm very happy and I'm very happy for the overall ad hoc community. Honestly, I wish we we had maybe even a whole either different extension to the to V2. Now, that is a good point. Make sure before you start doing stuff, use your requires command. Maybe get our script. I'll try to put the URL up here on the screen to uh, that will go through and you can point to your, your auto hockey files if you want and add the requires command and add it for the requires 1.1 or whatever version you're using. And that way, when you start dabbling in V2, you can easily tell the difference of what version it is because they both use the same extension, which that, that could be very problematic. Um, and right now is a great time if you haven't used V2 to go ahead and do that. Because when you start dabbling in with them, then you start getting confused on what's V1 and what's V2. When you look at them, it's pretty easy to tell. There's a built-in or there's a script when you download V2 on, you can have it review your code. And if you use the requires command very quickly, we'll see that you use that and assign it to V1 or V2. If you haven't used the requires command, it will examine the code and try to make a decision and use one over the other. Um, that one for me at the time, at least when it was released, it ran really slow. Uh, and so I decided not to use that that install script to help, you know, decide the version. Even though we were putting the requires command uh, directive at the top of my scripts. And it just still was really slow in launching. It added like two seconds to every script I was launching. It was really weird. So, but anyway, I think all these bugs, they're going to get worked out eventually, right? We'll get it fixed. But I'd love for you guys to comment below what... Are you using V2 now? Do you plan to switch to it? Are you excited about switching to it? Are you afraid about switching to it? What do you think? Like, um, are you like me that I'm begrudgingly kind of switching to it? I, I do think the thing is there's not really big performance gains that you get from it. I think once you get used to it for programmers, there will be development gains, right? So I'll be faster at creating, especially GUIs, you know, things. Because there's, there's just stuff that'll be so much simpler to develop. And that is one of the key strengths about hockey. But I was, I was telling Isaiah the other day, we were doing a chat GPT video. Look, chat GPT is kind of alleviating the need for us to even be able to do the minutia in programming. I think chat GPT is going to open up the world for us to program in other, even people that aren't programmers, to create code in other programming languages and run them. So this also, and, and at some point, we're going to create our own environment in ChatGPT about running auto hotkey code. So it'll start writing code and then because it's not even really aware. It's aware of auto hockey V2 exists, but it doesn't. Every time you ask for code in auto hockey, it gives you V1 code, not V2 code. So at some point, we're going to start submitting our version two scripts because we have a fair amount of them now and training it on V2. Um, and then hopefully, we can get it to convert and maybe compared to like Dimitri has, he's been working and I forget with the other people of a, a V1 to V2 converter, right? Which is really cool. But maybe the AI approach will be even better because that AI, the converter tool does a decent job on basic scripts. But if you have a complicated GUI and, and you know, it's, it's complicated. So anyway, please chime in below. Thank you so much for watching and uh, please like the video if you haven't already. It really helps me out and get more views and have an awesome day. Again, congrats, Lexicos. Cheers.